Hi, and welcome to the fourth week of Better Together. I trust and I pray that you guys are growing together and that you truly are experiencing that it is better together as we grow in community. We are continuing to obviously explore community. Uh, we really want to experience it and not just talk about it theoretically, but also to really live it out and to experience it in our lives. And this week, the theme is radical community. Now the daily devotions have taken us through radical community, the body of Christ, love and discipleship. And today, we're going to look at the prickly issues. The fact is that being in community is not easy. And despite all the benefits and God's call for us to live in community, it does come with its own set of challenges and with a few prickles. In fact, if community isn't difficult, it's quite possible that you're not doing it right. Remember, it's not a problem if you have not been reading the daily devotions. But once again, we do encourage you to read those as you are able. Before we get into tonight's lesson, let's just spend a few minutes together in prayer. As we've done in the past weeks, uh, a few of you in the group just pray out short uh, sentences, one sentence prayers, just praising God for who He is, thanking Him and worshipping Him. Won't you do that now? Amen. Let's share briefly about the past week. Maybe one or two of you have got something on your hearts that you would like to share within the group. Something that you've experienced, maybe something that you're struggling with, maybe just a highlight from the past week as you've experienced something of God in your life. Once again, as we've said before, it doesn't have to be spiritual or deep, but just an opportunity to remove those masks as we become community together. So take a few minutes right now and, and share together. If you feel it's right, you may pray for one another or pray for something that somebody mentions. But take a few minutes now and just share in your group. Last week, you were challenged to come up with one or two things that you would hold one another accountable for as a group. You were also invited to come up with one thing that you could do as a group to worship corporately and to agree when and where to do it. So how did that go? Share your experiences with one another now about how that went. You can also take a few minutes to discuss what you have read so far this week, sharing your experiences and insights. Otherwise, you can move on.
Our passage for tonight is Acts chapter 2, verse 42 to 47. It's going to come up on your screen now. Pause and read this out aloud together. This is a beautiful and a compelling picture of Christian community. The early church provides a great model of what churches to this day should try to follow. Churches that work like this are inspirational, not only for the members of the body, but for the extended community as well. All are blessed through such a community. Now for it to work, the biggest hurdle is getting past the masks we all put on and being real with one another. If we look at all the hallmarks of community, we will see that none of them will work unless we drop the facade and be real with one another and with God. We will look at five hallmarks of community today. There is a brief introduction, but then some questions to discuss. So let's get straight into it. The first hallmark of Christian community is devotion to Christ. Verse 42 in that passage says, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. There is nothing half-hearted or superficial about this. It is devotion, passion, full-on commitment. According to the dictionary, devotion means to adhere to one, be his adherent, to be devoted or constant to one, to be steadfastly attentive unto, to give unremitting care to a thing, to continue all the time in a place, to persevere and not to faint. Pause the video now for a few minutes and ask the questions. Are we devoted to God's teaching? What are we doing as a community to be devoted, to be steadfastly attentive, to persevere, etc., to God's teaching? Is it possible to do this superficially? What can we, as a community, be doing to be more devoted? The second hallmark is a strong commitment to one another. Verse 44 in that passage says, All the believers were together and had everything in common. A community that honors Christ will display loyalty, dependability, mutual support, respect, and show grace, love, and forgiveness towards one another. They have a strong sense of unity and they make unity a priority. They had everything in common, not a few things, not just finances or just values or just worship, but the Bible tells us everything in common. This must have taken work. Can you imagine being in a community where you have everything in common? To be that, we have to let go of petty differences and our own agendas. We'd have to let go of what we see as our rights and possibly even our needs. We'd have to die to self. Authentic community means that we truly believe that those in our community are more important than ourselves. Pause now to consider this for a moment. What do we need to do to make unity a priority and to make unity work? The third hallmark is generosity in meeting needs. Verse 46 of that passage says, They sold their property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. As we are real and genuine with one another, 
real and genuine needs become known. Amongst us there are those who are disheartened and in distress and going through hardships. People struggle. Just because we are in a Christian community does not mean that we don't have struggles. But in the community we are aware of the needs of others and we respond to them. We assist, we encourage and we generously meet the needs of others. And this may well demand self-sacrifice and it certainly demands a generous spirit. But this is where the Christian-centered community steps up. Pause for a few minutes now to consider this. Are we aware of the needs of those in our small group community? If not, what do we need to do differently to become more aware or to create an environment where people can share their needs without fear? What are we doing to generously meet them? The fourth hallmark is joy and fellowship. We read in verse 46 that they met together every day. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts. Yes, we relax together, we be glad together, we enjoy downtime in community. This verse implies times of fellowship and relaxation, eating, laughing, pursuing common interests, a liberty to offset the hard times and the hard work. And it also helps us to get to know each other better in a less formal environment. This contributes to even greater unity and commitment. Pause now and consider this point. Do we relax and enjoy downtime together? If not, why not? What holds us back? If so, what can we do to make it better for all? The fifth and last hallmark is a sense of shared destiny from God. Verse 47 tells us that they were praising God and enjoying the favor of all people, and the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Those in the early church saw that God was doing something, something that was beyond them and their requests. God was doing a work of His own. And that work transcended their efforts and connected them to God's eternal purposes. God was transforming the lives of people through His salvation and was bringing them to the church. They must have felt swept along by the Spirit and caught up in a greater purpose and linked to God's eternal plans. This hallmark is not something we can manufacture. It comes from God. It is a gift of grace. We can, however, undermine it or even prevent it from happening. When we fail to seek to build the kind of authentic community God desires for us, God works through Christian community, and the more we work to build this community, the more we and the world are blessed. Pause now to consider what we should stop doing, the things that might hinder or undermine this outpouring of grace. What can we do to create the kind of community God desires? Okay, so we've looked at those five hallmarks. There was one hallmark that we didn't mention. Can you figure out what it was? Pause the video now and reread the passage from Acts chapter 2, from 42 to verse 47, and see if you can find that last hallmark. Pause now. Did you get it? It's experiencing God's supernatural work. And we read that in verse 43. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. We should be building a community that thinks about and prays for miracles and for powerful signs. And we should expect these things to happen as we function as a community. Now, we don't have time to go into this in more detail today. But uh, I just wanted to point out so that you'll remember that last hallmark. And that is experiencing God's supernatural moving and God's supernatural power in community. 
As a group, uh, now spend some time talking about what practical steps you can take to build the sort of community that God wants us to be and agree on one or two things that you will do over the next week. And that concludes tonight's session. I'm going to pray together, pray this prayer in your hearts, and then spend some time together discussing those practical steps that I mentioned. Let's pray together now. God our Father, we praise you for the gift of community. We thank you for the communities in which we work and live and worship. Communities that you have placed us in. Thank you for the community that is your body, the church. Fill us with your spirit so that as one we may reflect your light and love to each other and to the world. Fill us spirit so that we may build communities that delight you. Help us to be brave and selfless and devoted in our ways. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.